If your welds look like this, and you want them to look like this, stick around. Welcome to the Night Club, guys. It's your host, the Night Rancher. Now, I'm in the process of welding about 200 feet of wrought iron for a side project that we have. It is a big headache, and it's very tedious, and there's a lot of work to be done. But I'm going to be taking a break from that, and I'm actually going to be throwing this video out for those of you that are either casual welders or beginner welders that are both using flux core wire. And I'm using flux core wire right now, and it's actually a really good process, and it can actually come out pretty clean if you guys know how to weld it. So what we're looking at right here, we're looking at four different welds that I just did myself on the exact same machine using the exact same settings and pretty much almost no time uh, from each other. So I didn't even let the material cool down or anything. I went through and did boom, 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 and boom. From just looking at the different welds, you would assume that I was actually messing with the material, uh, messing with the settings on the machine, uh, or doing something because this weld doesn't look anything close to any of these other welds. And a lot of that has to do with hand controls. Hand control is basically how you control your MIG gun, whether you have it too close, too far away, or you're moving too fast, or you're moving too slow. The four welds that I have here are all done using very different techniques, and we're gonna go through them one by one. This first one right here that we're looking at, I was way too far away, and I was moving the gun forward and back, simulating uh, when you have too fast of a wire speed. What happens is, when you have too fast of the wire speed, the wire doesn't have a chance to burn up and, and flow in between the weld, so it'll bump your gun back. When it bumps your gun back, you're going to break the connection. Then you're going to start the connection back up, and then it's going to break the connection again. What ends up happening is you're going to have a bunch of little balls because every time you break the connection, the wire cools down and the puddle cools down. So every time you start again, you're starting off... Uh, basically from zero and you're trying to warm up the puddle one at a time boom 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 and every time you keep doing that you create another ball and another ball and another ball and you're also going to notice a lot of spatter around here and in some instances you're going to notice that you're going to lose a piece of the wire because if you're too far away like let's say you're this far away your wire is going to start to get boiling hot and it's eventually going to break off of your gun if it doesn't end up burning up on the material and the rest of the material that doesn't melt is going to be sticking out right here this next weld right here is done at the same height so probably about six inches away from the material but this one has a more consistent wire speed so i'm holding the gun as steady as possible and i'm giving it uh, time for it to flow out and moving the gun as i'm going along but as you guys can see although i am getting heat into the material it's not enough heat to actually make the welding wire actually flow out correctly. So the best way to take care of this is since you already know the wire speed is good, go ahead and get closer. You want to get as close as you can without damaging your actual MIG gun. So the tip of the MIG gun shouldn't be touching the material because a lot of times you are going to weld the tip of the MIG gun to the material and if you do that, then you're not going to be able to move and you're, you're going to end up having a lot of different problems. So you don't want to get it so close that, you're, that you risk touching it, but you don't want to be so far away that your weld isn't flowing out, the puddle isn't flowing out. This next one right here, I'm actually a lot closer, probably close to the distance that I'm supposed to be, which is a little bit less than an inch. So when people talk about stick out, they're talking about either a half inch or three quarters of an inch. Uh, there's really no way for you to keep measuring your stick out as you're welding because it's kind of more of an instinctive thing and the three quarters half inch is kind of just like a general rule of thumb for you to have a general idea if you're about two inches away you know that you're too far away you got to get closer so like i said this weld and this weld were done at the same settings and at the same height the only difference between this one and this one is that on this one i decided to go a little bit faster because some of you guys are really scared of burning through the material making a hole in the material and filling up a weld uh, is not very fun so a lot of you guys go through and they, you guys as soon as it starts uh, flowing you guys start going and going and going and it doesn't quite 
not only does it not look right, it doesn't penetrate very well. If we had both of these going left and right and we tried to break them, this one was going to hold a lot better than this one does. Once you guys start perfecting your welds, you guys are going to realize that you guys can't weld without gloves anymore and you won't be able to weld without jackets anymore. And the reason for that is the better your welds are, the more heat you're putting into the material, but also the more heat you're putting onto yourself. And in fact, uh, up until probably last year, I was welding, although I was welding with gloves, I was not welding with a jacket. And what was happening is after my welding sessions, I would end up with sunburns on the inside of my arms. And so after that, I started wearing these jackets, these denim jackets or whatever these kind of mechanic jackets are. Uh, this will protect me from getting sunburns. If you are welding like this, there's no way you guys are going to get sunburns because you're, you're not producing enough heat. You're not putting enough uh, material into your weld to do any kind of damage to you or your body. The only thing that's going to happen is you're going to have a weld that's probably going to fail and it doesn't look very pretty. This one also probably won't hold because all the material is sitting on top. You've introduced the heat into the material, but all the material is sitting on top. So you actually got to get closer to make sure the only amount of stick out that's coming out is what's actually being melted. If you have a stick out probably of two, three inches, only the tip is going to be melted and the rest is going to be cold. So you're going to be injecting a bunch of cold material into this weld and it's not going to flow out the way you want it to. This one right here, although we're at the right distance, we're moving forward way too fast and also the angle of our gun is probably wrong. So the angle of our gun, aside from the distance, you got to worry about which way the nozzle is pointing. So when you're doing flux core, if you're starting here and you're ending here, you want to make sure that your gun is pointed this way. You don't want to point your gun that way and you don't want to point your gun this way. The reason for that is as you're welding and you're creating your puddle, you're pushing your puddle back. So flux core has obviously flux on the inside of the weld and as it's cooling, all that flux material rises to the surface and creates what's called slag. It's this little layer of metal on top of your actual weld which doesn't look very pretty. Once you take that layer off, it'll just pretty much flake off and it'll look like this. Nice and consistent. You can actually see the ripples in this weld of when I was actually pushing the old weld back as I was welding through and you can see where I stopped right there. If you point it this way and you try to weld, what's going to happen is you're going to have like your weld's going to kind of want to eat into itself and it's not going to come out right. You're going to have a lot of por porosity because you're going to trap some of those flux material inside of your weld and you're going to create a bunch of holes so you don't want to uh, go behind it. If you point your gun this way or that way obviously you're going to be pushing your puddle out that way and your weld is going to come out very crooked and it's not going to come out straight. So whatever way you're going you drag your weld along that way as well. I watch a lot of welding channels and the very popular phrase is if it has slag you drag which means that you are going away from where the puddle is, you are pulling the weld towards you. You are not pushing the weld because you're going to have problems. So all of these materials do have slag. If I take my slag hammer and I hit this, you guys can see that there's a little bit of shiny material in there, but it doesn't look anywhere near as well as this one does. And also the slag is much more difficult to remove because of the inconsistencies in the weld. Once you have it very uniform and straight, it only takes about one, one or two smacks and the whole thing just comes off and you can just blow it off. The rest you can just clean it off with either the rest of the hammer or if you're smart you're going to be using anti-spatter spray and that's going to coat the entire material in like this oil that will prevent these little balls, this little spatter from sticking to your material which will also allow your material to come out very very clean. So once you guys dial it in, you guys are going to want to look at different products that you guys can do use on it to further increase the quality of your weld. So if you guys focus on your hand control, you can turn this into this. If you guys have any questions, post them down below. I'll see you guys all in the next one. Night Wrencher out.